Ready to make the flower carding video? Oh, yeah, yeah, uh, let me just go get some stuff first. Yeah, me too. Be right back. All right, I got all the effect texts right here, and what are you doing? Huh? What do you think? Uh, look, look, here. Huh? Oh. Cardian. Yeah, I, I... I mean, you see how I... I'll go change. Good afternoon, Jank Enthusiasts. I'm MBT, and this is 10 Minute Testing. To those who look to me for moral fortitude, I have let you down. This week, I did something I promised you all I never would. No, it wasn't to take a raid sponsorship. And it wasn't to stay away from politics on my Yu-Gi-Oh! channel. And of course, I would never violate my promise to make anything but the most jaw-dropping and well-researched content around. Mostly. No, I violated my invalid oath to never read the Flower Cardians. I'm so sorry, and I hope you can forgive me, but I promise. The knowledge I have gained has given me a power beyond meta. Presenting Flower Cardian. Before we begin, if you're on the fence about subscribing, let me sweeten the pot for you. Click that little button below the video and I'll make sure the next import slot is spent on a secret rare printing of Light Flare. So here's the list, and what I love most about this deck is that if you shave the extra, it's literally $30. But the list will still cost you. Let's just say... You won't pay for it in money. As always, I'll give you a background about the archetype, a little bit of a discussion about what I hope the deck can do, and of course, the card by card. But first, this video is sponsored by Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Deck. Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Deck is an online strategy site for our mutual favorite card game. It's got a deck builder, card database, and a wealth of strategy articles. It's also where I post the Quarantine Series deck breakdowns, so give it a look at www.ygoprodeck.com. Now let's figure out Flower Cardian. The philosophy behind the archetype is extremely interesting. There are references to Hanafuda playing cards, with each level correlating to the month represented by its suit. Their attack and defense values are equal to 100 times their point value in their associated game as well. Their synchro monsters are based on the combos in Koi Koi, a game you can play with Hanafuda cards. But enough about the background. I know why you're really here. You heard playable, cheap deck and started drooling, then you read the cards and got a headache. It's extremely frustrating that such an interesting and powerful budget option is gatekept by its difficulty, but don't worry, I'll do my best to demystify the archetype. The Flower Cardians can be sorted into three categories with two exceptions. We'll refer to the first category as freebies. These Flower Cardians can be summoned from your hand at any time, provided you have a lower level Cardian on your side of the field. Each also has a secondary effect. Polonia is Battle Fader, Willow draws a card, Zebragrass is Cosmotown, and Cherry Blossom tributes a card to summon from deck. We'll refer to the second category as Tributes. These require a tribute of a Flower Cardian monster, after which they draw a card. If that card's a Flower Cardian monster, you get a benefit. Maple with Deer destroys a spell or trap, Clover with Boar destroys a monster, and Peony with Butterfly is a Spiral Gear drone. Finally, we'll refer to the third category as Upgrades. These monsters can only be summoned by tributing a Flower Cardian with a specific level. On Summon, they draw a card and Special Summon it if it's a Flower Cardian monster. The only one of these we're playing is Willow with Calligrapher, which is notable because its associated monster is Willow, the most accessible and most frequently looped Cardian, and because it's a tuner. Finally, the two exceptions are Cherry Blossom with Curtain, which can be revealed from the hand, draws you a card, and then summons itself if you rip a Cardian, and Pine, which draws a card on Normal Summon, which you can keep if it's a Flower Cardian. Notably, Pine is level 1, meaning it'll turn on all of your freebies. These monsters are paired alongside some supremely broken spell cards. Firstly, Rhoda, since they're inexplicably warriors. Flower Stacking, which lets you control the top of your deck. Super Koi Koi, which lets you summon from the top of your deck. Recardination, a Reborn, and Flower Gathering, a From Deck Soul Charge. Notably, all of the Cardian cards have graveyard effects in the event you accidentally rip them off the top with the Cardian and have to send them to the graveyard. Over the course of a turn, you'll want to manage freebies and the two tuners the deck contains, Willow with Calligrapher and Peony with Butterfly. Your payoffs are Light Flare, a big Chungus with 5k attack, an Armades effect, and a spell and trap negate. Light Shower, a burn monster who turns your Cardians into big BLSs. Boardfly, who locks the graveyard, and Moonflower Viewing, a combo enabler. 
Over the course of a single turn, by prioritizing Willow, your most powerful card, alongside effective tuner management, you can end on between two and three of these synchro bosses, likely tailored to your opponent's specific strategy if you've been able to sculpt their deck with Peony with Butterfly. Finally, if you're looking to build the extra deck budget, you can shave everything but the synchros. The freebies Xeno lock you, so you won't go into the extra for anything but Cardians often, but you can occasionally get creative in specific matchups. So with that, let's get into the card by card. Firstly, the freebies. 3 Polonia, 3 Willow, 3 Zebra Grass, and 3 Cherry Blossom. Next, the tributes. 3 Clover with Boar, and 3 Peony with Butterfly. I've cut Maple with Deer because I think popping monsters is probably more important at the moment. After that, the single upgrade, 3 Willow with Calligrapher. I don't like the upgrades at all, but Willow with Calligrapher is a tuner, and otherwise we've only got the one. Finally, the exceptions, 3 Cherry Blossom with Curtain, and 3 Pine. For spells, we're on zero copies of Super All-In because I'm not interested in playing an FTK list. Do keep in mind, if you're looking to abuse D-Synchro, this is the deck for you. 1 Rota, 3 Stacking, 3 Koi Koi, stop telling me to play 2, 3 Recardination, and 3 Flower Gathering. In the extra, we're playing two copies of Flower Cardian Light Flare, three copies of Flower Cardian Light Shower, two Board Fly, two Moonflower Viewing, the Seven Sins Package, Liba, Gustav, and BLS. So with that, let's jump into the games. Our first match is up against Gaia. That's right, Gaia, the cover archetype for Rise of the Duelist. Gaia, they have a Starlight Rare this set. Gaia. Thankfully, we are going first, and we've opened Pine. We're going to lead with a copy of Reinforcement of the Army, just getting another Flower Card into hand before normal summoning a Pine and activating its effect. Ooh, a Willow is perfect. We'll special summon a Cherry Blossom with Curtain, and it eats a no material. This is such a problem. Because we only have five Monster Zones, we now can go into Light Shower Maximum. We'll activate Stacking and then activate Cherry Blossom's effect. We'll then Tribute. Unfortunately, cannot Tribute the no material Monster to get a copy of Willow. We'll activate Willow's effect, and then, wait, we can go into a Peony with Butterfly, and then activate Willow, shuffling back the Willow. Important important to be looping these if you want to activate as many as possible over the course of a turn. Okay, this is as good as it's getting, so we're going for a Light Shower. From here, we're going to Special Summon a copy of Cherry Blossom again, and then a Polonia. We'll then go into a Clover with Boar, just looking for anything at this point, and ugh, the spells aren't it. We'll go to another Clover, and Zebra Grass might do it. We need to get a little bit lucky, but we'll shuffle back both of these that we no longer need. Oh, that's fantastic. We'll first go for a Willow, activating Willow's effect, shuffling back a card from our graveyard to draw an additional card before going for Peony with Butterfly. Incidentally, is a tuner, so we'll be able to Synchro Summon a second copy of Light Shower. In draw phase, we'll do 3,000 damage to our opponent's life points. I gave them gateway, thinking that it was a set rotation target, so imagine my shock when they activate it. They'll go for a pot of extravagance and find a set rotation off the top, activating it, and oh god, this is just a case of too many searchers and not enough play starters. They'll activate Dark Ruler No More, set two, and pass turn. Unfortunately, Dark Ruler No More means that we are going to get our draw step. Okay, we'll style just a little bit. We're going to start with a copy of Flower Stacking, which is just a fantastic graveyard option. We'll normal summon a copy of Pine and draw off the top, ugh, a Koi Koi. We'll special summon the Willow and activate Willow's effect, shuffling back Willow, god that feels so good to say, before activating the effect of Cherry Blossom and going into a Peony with Butterfly. This should be more than enough, but just as insurance, let's go into a Light Flare. We'll proceed to Battle Phase and deal lethal. Our second game showcases this deck's immense ability to pivot once you've received information from Peony with Butterfly. Our opponent for game two is playing Burning Abyss, and we are going first. We'll lead once again with a copy of Reinforcement of the Army, but once again, we've got the Pine in hand. We'll activate Pine's effect, drawing off the top. Ooh, a Willow with Calligrapher. A tuner is fantastic from this position. We'll activate a couple of Cherry Blossom with Curtains, and we hit them both. We'll go for a Clover with Boar, activating its effect. Oh, another Willow with Calligrapher. Okay. We'll activate Willow's effect, and ooh, we draw a Flower Stacking, so we should be able to make this work. We'll go into a Willow with Calligrapher, activate its effect to draw a card. Uh, we're then going to Special Summon a Polonia and Synchro Summon a Light Flare, then activate Cherry Blossom with Curtain, drawing what we know is on top, a Willow. We'll activate Willow's effect, shuffling back Willow, as one does, to draw a card, before making another Willow with Calligrapher and making a Peony with Butterfly after a Clover with Boar. It's at this point I realize my opponent is on Burning Abyss, so I pivot. From here, we're going to activate the effect of Polonia and Synchro Summon a copy of Boardfly. We'll activate Boardfly's effect and pass it back. Our opponent for turn draws... Oh, just what I wanted them to, a Skarm. They're going to go from Fiendish Rhino Warrior into Skarm. They'll make a Dante and mill one. Afterwards, they'll make a copy of Beatrice and pass turn. This is a fantastic position, and in main phase one, I'll activate Boardfly's effect, prompting a Dynamicious from our opponent, prompting a Light Flare negation from us. This should be the end of the game. We'll activate Flower Stacking to get this copy of Pine back. We'll normal summon the Pine, finding off the top, ugh, a Recardination, but as we reveal five spells and traps off the top of our deck, our opponent realizes they've lost. So, it's time for game three, and you know what that means, a best of three versus meta. Our opponent's playing Numeron Eldlich. Whew, at least it's not Synchron. This hand is 
fine for us, it just lacks a normal summon. Realistically, we'll probably find one over the course of the turn. We're going to lead with a copy of Cherry Blossom with Curtain before going into Peony with Butterfly. We'll draw a card and, ugh, so many Zebra Grass. We're going to go for a Willow here and then activate Willow's effect. Just want to start looping these as early as possible. We're going to go for a Cherry Blossom, pitching the Willow and drawing a Polonia for a Willow from deck and activating Willow's effect, tucking back Willow to continue drawing. Okay, a Flower Stacking is a good start. We're going to lead with the effect of Zebra Grass, shuffling back most of our hand, trying to get to cards like Super Koi Koi specifically. We'll activate Flower stacking, then activate Willow with Calligrapher to draw off the top of our deck. Next, we're going to go for a Cherry Blossom with Curtain once again before going for a Board Fly. We'll activate Board Fly now before starting the Willow loops again. We'll activate Willow, shuffling back Willow, and drawing a card before activating another Willow, and shuffling back another card from our graveyard. We'll draw a card off the top. Ooh, it's a Recardination. We should be able to make this work. We're going to go into a Light Flare, then activate Koi Koi. We have to hit two, and what do you know, we hit three. Wait, one of them is a Tuner. This complicates things. Okay, well, their effects will activate, unfortunately. Afterwards, we're going to activate Recardination for a Willow. We're going to draw an additional card using the effect of Willow to shuffle back Willow with Calligrapher. We'll go into a Moonflower Viewing, and we should have enough. We'll Special Summon the Pine that we draw off the top and a Polonia. That's enough to make Light Shower. Board Fly, Light Flare, Light Shower. Pretty powerful. We'll deal 1500 to our opponent in the draw step, and that's time in the round. They'll set 5, and then at end phase, I elect to skip my next draw. In standby, they'll activate Guardian of the Golden Land and Eldlixer of Scarlet Sanguine. I will negate Eldlixer of Scarlet Sanguine because I'm pretty sure it's the only way they can get Eldlich out. We'll lead with an activation of Boardfly before activating this flower stacking in Graveyard to get our normal summon, Pine. We'll then go for a Cherry Blossom with Curtain before activating the effective Super Koi Koi in Graveyard so we don't have to go for a freebie and aren't Xeno locked. Afterwards, we will make Eldlich's Worst Nightmare, a copy of BLS in attack position with 4,500. We'll pass it back to our opponent, who for turn draws a Numeron Network one turn too late. They'll activate the Numeron Network, we'll activate Light Flare, they'll activate Conquistador, and then afterwards, run said Conquistador directly into our big Bungus. So, it's time for game two, and... Yeah, we were going to have to go second eventually. Our hand is really good, but I don't think it plays very well through S0. Our opponent's going to lead with a copy of Pot of Extravagance, drawing off the top... Two okay cards. I just have to hope that they don't have enough gates in the extra here, and unfortunately as they activate Numeron Calling, they reveal that they do. They'll overlay for a copy of Utopic's Exile, set four, and pass back to me. Okay, well, maybe we can pass once. They'll Sanguine for a copy of Eldlich, and then I'll just hit that end turn button. They'll activate Hakero of the Golden Land at end step, and then for turn, draw a second copy. They're going to switch their monsters to attack position. Whew, no access code death this turn. We still have one more top deck to get us out of this, and we rip off the top. Super Koi Koi. Okay, let's, uh, normal summon Pine and concede. So it's time for that all-important game three and... Oh my god! This is a really powerful hand from both of us. It'll be interesting to see how this turns out. We're going to lead with a copy of Flower Stacking. Our opponent will chain Numeron Wall because they don't want to click Ignore Chain a thousand times. Next, we'll normal summon a copy of Cherry Blossom. That's right, you can normal it! And find a copy of Cherry Blossom with Curtain off the top of our deck, summoning a Pine in the process to fulfill the condition of all of our freebies. One such is Willow, who we will use to draw a card, a Cherry Blossom for a Cherry Blossom, before activating Curtain for another Willow. We'll tribute for Calligrapher. We now have a way to one Synchro, and as we've been Recardination, I'm looking for a way to make a second one. Any spell here that's not Recardination, and ooh, that's a great one. Okay, we'll special summon the Willow, activate its effect to draw an additional card, and now it is time to Synchro Shokan, a Flower Cardian Light Flare. Unfortunately, our gathering is met with an Ash Blossom. We could still potentially do it. We're going to go for Recardination, and then we'll activate the effect of Willow again. Looking for anything here, we'll activate Reinforcement of the Army, uh, we'll go for the Cherry Blossom with Curtain, but we miss! Okay, okay, we can still do it. Willow with Calligrapher. Ah, one freebie. Okay, our only hope here is if our opponent doesn't read. And they don't! Our Armadies effect kicks in and they're forced to go for Megaclops. That's still a huge problem for us. We can negate the Cursed Eldland as they set two, but gonna be rough. Wait, Megaclops isn't immune to everything. It could theoretically die from, say, I don't know, a cheated out Willow with Calligrapher overlaying into a Pain Gainer, into a Seven Sins? We'll walk in directly, negate the Haketo, and get in for lethal. So we're back with the deck and... Uh, well, I wasn't really expecting that. Um, let's do the pros and cons. First, the pros. One, it's good. It's, like, really good. I was shocked at how good it was, how strong the end bosses were, how consistent the setups ended up being. Seriously kind of blown away here. Two, it matches up extremely well against the current metagame. BLS is already strong enough that people are jamming it pretty much everywhere, and Light Shower gives your 5,000 attack point monster a nice coat of black luster paint. Boardfly's graveyard locking effect is also immense. And three, 
I think Konami had to know what they were up to when they gave this archetype a burn boss. Your opponent is going to spend so much time reading your monsters, they're going to go to game two with three seconds left. And the cons. One, the ceiling on this deck is pretty low. Three bosses is really all you can manage, and decks are more than capable of chewing through those, no matter how sticky they are. Two, your games aren't going to be a lot of fun. Get prepared for a lot of explaining, a lot of frustration from your opponents, and all-around bad feelings surrounding the resolution of your ninth willow. And three, it's a leap. It sucks that one of the highest power, cheapest decks in the format is also one of the most difficult. Not a great point of entry for new people to be able to solve Einstein's last theorem before they can synchro summon. All in all, I am taken aback by the power of this deck, the consistency of this deck, and the heights to which the new support permits it to reach. If you've avoided Cardian so far, it might be time to start taking it seriously. So that's that. As always, thanks to my patrons MeepMoto27, Dominic Ernst, Harrison Karp, Alex Perea, Angel Ferox, Candyman, Crispy, Innercrest, Mike Carlotti, Seeker, Sir Tachyon, Stevie Blunder, Tyler Slacks, Tyrese Biggums IV, Adam Trevino, Adrian Bra, Amid Elefanti, Algis Marson Cavizius, Andrew Benson, Andrew Horseman Linderman, Angry Bread, Apex Systems, Billy Williams, Blake Root, Blue Boy, Chad Bortz, Chibi Gohan, Chorps Away, CJ Alex, Connor Kid, Dan the Man Hoban, Darcy Tevs, Devin D, Dylan Conley, Donnie Fillerup, Duncoro, Distrin, Emperor Stove, Ernesto Ibarra, Fighting Fangwong, F U T R, Gustavo Secon, Isaac Jackson, Jane Lenya, Jason Leonard, Jeff Leonard, Jel Du Rado, Jose Luis Cortez, Kaiba Corp Shill, Corey Hess, Kurukaze, Lavender Lemonade, Lawrence, Lucas Girdis, Lucky Number Five, Lucas Arizo Hansen, Meds for Feds, Michael Oskfark, Muno Arashi, Moira Brownwolf, Nick Extreme. 99, Nix Dolores, Pro Yugidad, Pro FP2, Sam Soon, Second, Shane, Meadow Edits, Pranga, Standards Objective, Swag Kage, Tim Holloway, Yuri's Best, Zach Janchuski, Zach McKee, Bleh, Dive Missile, Josh, Picnic Blast It, This Machine 237, TJ Steakhouse, and Yukie. If you like what you see, please consider subscribing, and if you want to be part of the process, consider following me on Twitch as well. See you next time.